the most terrifying sounds in war. Today we're going to be reacting to simple history. Let's go. Psychological sonic weapons. Oh, those are some cool ones. Some weapons are not designed to kill or maim the enemy, but rather to instill fear. If done effectively, okay, frightened soldiers no stuff. longer wish to fight, but instead flee the horrors of combat. A key component often built into these weapons of fear is the noise it's they so create, it's... with many specifically German's designed okay. to trigger so psychological effects well. simply through intense or unsettling noise. In turn, they prey on human susceptibility. And the prisoners in Gitmo, Guantanamo Bay, they would be constantly playing pop music to them at all hours of the night as psychological torture. That's not technically torture, so. One, Aztec death whistle. Oh, cool. In 1999. I actually have a couple of those. They're pretty cool. I don't know if they're all, all that scary, especially if like the other side also has them. In fact, have been one of the earliest examples of a sound-based weapon. While excavating a temple dedicated to Ehekash, the Aztec wind god, archaeologists found a sacrifice skeleton of a young... You can make them sound like jaguars, um, eagles, all kinds of stuff. ...who in his hands was holding two whistles. It was assumed the whistles were there to imitate the winds of the underworld. Researchers soon labeled these unusual finds as the Aztec death whistle. As archaeologists continued to piece together information about the whistle and how it was used, other theories <laughs> of its use in combat began to arise. It's likely... I know the ones for jaguars they do sound an awful lot like a jaguar, um, which I imagine wouldn't be all that helpful unless you were doing an ambush or something. But let's see what they say. It's likely that these weren't just instruments used during human sacrifices, because given the horrifying... <laughs> yeah, I imagine the, in the heart would be much scarier cutting the heart out. Of war. The death whistle is categorized as an air spring type of whistle, with earlier versions having been found from the Mayans. Mm -hmm. In the case of the Aztec death whistle, it sounds like someone I'm sure being flayed. That's the first time a conquistador's hearing that. I bet that's pretty terrifying. Um, but I feel like after a while, especially if it's like Aztec against Aztec, I feel like it really wouldn't do all that much because they would all know. Trumpet Jericho. Jericho. Stuka okay, the Stukas. When Those the can German. be really scary. People constantly talk about how scary those were during World War II. Two, Junkers Ju-87 are perhaps one of the first aircraft that come to mind, being one of the most notable and well-recognized aircraft of the entire war. The famous Stuka dive bomber and ground attack aircraft was used during the Spanish Civil War as part of the German Condor Legion, and during the early years of World War II as part of Germany's Blitzkrieg tactics. The Battle of Britain soon revealed the... You know what's funny about the Stuka, though? So that sound, they add it to, like, everything when it comes to airplanes. Like, you watch movies, and there's constantly the air siren sound when a lot of those airplanes didn't have them. Also, they became so annoying to because they always were going. So as the pilots were flying, it was just kind of constantly there. And so they had to develop a flap that would close so that it wasn't constantly annoying them. Because I imagine hours of that sound would get really tiring as the pilot. Drawbacks of the Stuka bombers, of which the most important was its considerably low speed, making it incompatible for air-to-air -air combat. As the yeah, war they were went in, on and with German air supremacy faltering, the Stuka's role in the war similarly gradually declined. However, for one key reason, the Junkers Ju-87 remained a symbol of the Blitzkrieg. All those who face the aircraft remember one thing about them, the noise they made. Stukas were built with an interesting feature installed on their fuselage. There were two propeller-driven yeah, sirens attached to the undercarriage legs at 2.3 feet in diameter. When the aircraft would enter a dive, the siren would produce a loud screaming sound. As the diving speed increased, the noise intensified. The sirens were symbolically therefore named the Trumpets of Jericho. Ironically, yeah, the enemy soldiers were not the so only terrible. ones affected by the sirens. Okay, German pilots go. found them disturbing too, especially while conducting a complicated diving procedure. Another drawback was that the sirens actually decreased the speed by between 10 hmm. and 20 miles per hour, or 20 to 25 kilometers an hour. Eventually, the sirens were withdrawn from use, but the trumpets of Jericho I mean, remained a really prominent symbol of the war. You really hear them in Dunkirk. Like... That movie, I love that movie. It's so like intense and you can feel the anticipation, the anxiety, and then you see Stukas coming down, you hear the sound. Um, I think that that one probably 
really showed how terrifying they would be. Now, they could sometimes also have large numbers of them, which I imagine would be even scarier. Number three, Stalin's organs. BM-13 Katusha. The BM-13 Katusha's these use really as a cool. sound-based weapon was accidental the, the real and was of these never designed with psychological effects in mind. It was an innovative artillery weapon with a devastating destructive force. However, the sound it produced was so haunting that it instilled fear across ranks of the opposition. Officially called the BM-13, the Katusha was conceived based on the order of the Soviet Katusha. Scientific Research Institute III to create a rocket launcher on a truck chassis for launching aircraft rockets upon ground targets. Designed under top secrecy, the weapon was first used in 1941 against German trains at Orsha railway station See, with brutal That would be the perfect efficiency. place to use them. Early reports of its first uses. Because right, you have all these different rockets and they all come down in basically the same spot. And later cluster bombs and different types of munitions like that would also be, be highly effective. Um, but you can really see that there. Iron Man 1 has a similar rocket system in the beginning before he gets captured. And it shows like the whole mountain blowing up. This is kind of a similar idea. My Red Army Commander Andrei Yeremenko described how the rockets, quote, soared up like comets with a red tail and then exploded with a crash like thunder. The effect of the bursts of 320 rockets within a span of 26 seconds in a very limited area exceeded all expectations. The Germans ran away in panic and terror. <laughs> Admittedly, our own troops withdrew likewise. For security reasons, we yeah, had not imagine. informed Even them beforehand your side, of the use of the weapon. You don't know what's going on. You this crazy noise. Quote. The Soviets soon nicknamed the weapon Katusha, most likely after the famous patriotic wartime song. The Germans, too, had a nickname for the weapon, Stalin's Organs. This was inspired by the loud hissing the sound from the I incoming kind of rockets, annoying, which but, terrified uh, German troops. Its distinct yeah, sound became synonymous with the chaos it would bring. Just these. one salvo from four Katushas lasted between seven and ten seconds and detonated 4.35 tons of high explosive across a 10-acre area. Conclusively, really Katusha was a mighty wow. weapon with dual effectiveness. It brought destruction and created mass fear simultaneously. I'm not sure how much did they were against tanks. I'm going to have to look into that because... They were showing some tanks blowing up. I don't know if they were specifically like armor penetrating or not. That's definitely, I'm gonna have to look up that. We interrupt this broadcast so you can follow. Number four, Wandering Soul. Vietnam. During the US Vietnam War, the Vietnamese believed that when a person died, the body must be buried where they were born or their soul would forever wander. This is so dumb. I gotta tell you. The US experimented with a lot of stuff during the Vietnam War. Some of it was good, a lot of it was stupid. Uh, this is one of those ones I feel like is kind of stupid. Because I don't know how effective this would ever really be. But let's continue soldiers watching working and at a South Vietnamese radio station in 1964 saw an opportunity to exploit this belief. And so a series of ominous sounds and voice recordings were created. The guy wearing sunglasses South inside. South Vietnamese soldiers who imitated the wandering the radio souls guy. of fallen Viet Cong soldiers. These were compiled into the most well-known recording, Ghost Tape Number 10. The recording starts with Buddhist funeral music, followed by the howling sounds of a man in agony. Next, a voice of a little girl calls for her father, a fallen soldier, to come home. This is followed by a distant and echoed voice of her father responding, looking for his loved ones. Spooky. Finally, the Should voice of the dead Halloween. soldier addresses his comrades, telling them he died a senseless death and that he ended up in hell. The recording ends with a message, Go home, my friends, before it's too late. Followed by the groans of a man tormented in hell. I feel like maybe that would be kind of weird the first time. But then after that, like, why would you be freaked out about that? Also, I feel like there's no way of us knowing how effective it was. Because it's not like the enemy's ever going to really admit, like, oh, yeah, those were super freaky. I feel like that's just like, a, oh, what are, uh, what are people who live in a jungle afraid of? ghosts. Let's make ghost recordings. Um, however, during Guatemalan Civil War, the CIA did use um, large speakers in the U.S. Embassy to play music of dive bombing sounds to make it the city think that they were under siege. And that actually worked. Um, that caused the uh, Guatemalan government to surrender to the rebels. 
The operators were instructed to refrain from playing the tape when in proximity of allied South Vietnamese soldiers out of fear it may affect them as well. The success of Operation Wandering yeah, Soul see, was questionable. The Akong soldiers quickly realized what they were hearing was a recording, and in turn they used it to yeah. locate like the enemy's like position and aim their fire. As a result, the operation was canceled by 1971. This was not to say that further <laughs> recordings were not used, see, such as another idea recording with, like, of a tiger whistle. growl also played through loudspeakers. Number five, long-range acoustic oh, these device. Things are fun. I don't. I've never experienced one, so I don't know how it is, but it seems to be effective. LRAD. Um, the LRAD, or long-range acoustic device, is often placed in the family was, of modern sonic weapons. I think the Although better of the two earlier designers, Hulk movies. the American Technology Corporation in 2003 denied it was a weapon. It is nevertheless effectively a sound cannon that can be used to injure, repel, or incapacitate one's target. Its two main abilities are voice mm -hmm. amplification for communication over long distances and emitting an alert tone. The alert tone can reach 160 decibels, about 40 decibels louder than the volume of a jet engine taking off. Such a loud sound can cause pain, disorientation, nausea, migraines, and even hearing damage. Police units often use such devices oh, as the LRAD to control <laughs> large crowds, often Speaking during protests. The weapons are relatively small and can therefore be mounted onto vehicles such as automobiles, helicopters, and patrol boats. There are numerous reports of the successful use of LRAD as a sonic weapon coming from countries. I feel like that would be a much better thing against like large groups of people, not super effective like on an actual battlefield, but just people who are upset about something during a protest that maybe goes a little too violent. Oh, I feel like that's when you would actually want to use that. Across the globe. One particularly notable case comes from the Israeli Defense Forces, who used sonic weapons to break okay. Palestinian protesters. U.S. forces have also used them in Iraq, dispersing crowds from... There's also those ones, um, like the Cubans were using, on the U.S. Embassy. Uh, I watched a 60 Minutes thing about it. It's pretty crazy because it created, like, a specific tone that you couldn't hear. It was just inside. It was like an ultrasonic wave, and it gave a bunch of people weird health effects that the CIA and the U.S. Embassy didn't want to accept. And I think it's been, it's happened at a couple of other U.S. embassies of not-so-friendly countries. Locations known to be terrorist targets. Other uses for the weapon include fitting them to cargo ships as protection against pirates. Wherever and however used, it's one of the few... I don't know how effective that would be. Boats are pretty loud. 